So, if there's one thing the X-Men have always been, it's a metaphor. Be it for civil rights, gay rights, religious rights, uh, streaming rights. And if there's one thing that Fox Marvel has going for it, is the fact that they literally have a character who can tell you what's going on. Now, yeah, of course that can be a bad thing considering that, you know, we're at that stage where the meta-ness is, there's just an oversaturation of it. Movies are all about show, don't tell. But the beauty about Deadpool is that as rated R and as crazy and off the wall balls as he is, this is the character who's doing what the X-Men can't do because they're busy being these PG-13 blockbusters. Like, people have looked at X-Men storylines and related to them as stories of race, of oppression for certain people who are, you know, just different. The use of certain words that degrade and box people in. Some people relate to it as, you know, stories of transgenders, stories of coming out, stories of abuse. I'm no one to tell you that, that you can't relate to it, you know, however you do because that's what art is, right? Superheroes, whatever. But the X-Men movies nowadays are too busy playing catch up. Like they can't, the X-Men movies have a dude accused of oppressing people. How is he going to talk about oppression? I mean, when you've literally been given the magic button, right? When you get to play with time travel and you, for whatever reason, already messed up to the point that you got to go back and do it again, Deadpool can at least straight up just say, you know what? Timeline's getting confusing. L let's fix this. We'll start all over, right? And Deadpool at least has, you know, they took Van Wilder and made him look like some testes, right? And the filmmakers, the producers for this actually have just that because it they're able to give a message with this fourth wall breaking anti-hero who says stuff like this. I was molested. Me too. Uncle. Uncles. They took turns. I slept in a dishwasher box. <sighs> you had a dishwasher. Han from the Wilder People Kid even mentions him being the plus size representation that all of these big superhero movies ignore, right? This one actually has Negasonic Teenage Warhead dating knives. Wade scorns Cable for being racist, while at the same time, he's kind of like making fun of the SJWs online who take things out of context for no reason. And I think Deadpool has put himself in that perfect position. They put this character in the perfect position where he doesn't take himself too seriously. And as I've always said, some of the deepest, some of the most dramatic moments come from comedic actors from comedic movies when the other ones don't know what they're doing. I think Deadpool's in the perfect spot where, you know, even though he's a trainee, he's doing what the X-Men aren't doing, right? He's, he's actually representing what they're supposed to represent. And I think the best way that he's doing that is by playing with genres. I mean, the first one from the marketing alone was clearly pitching itself as a rom-com, just from the perspective of a dude. It has the same story beats as a rom-com. It plays out like a rom-com. And while I was working on this video, Screen Prism actually made an entire video essay on this. So one, check them out because they know what they're talking about. And two, just adds to my point that it was clearly a rom-com. Then you look at the second one, right? And right from the beginning of the movie and literally at the end of the movie, Wade tells you that you're watching a family film. It starts with a death, like many other family films. It's the main character getting upset at the people who are actually there for him, later on reconciling with them, putting away his stubbornness in order to bond with a group of people he can finally call his own. So I'm just over here with my little theory, wondering what the next genre is that he's going to play with, right? If he's already taken two intimate portrayals, right? And it's taken a superhero rated R movie to, to take the family genre, to take the romance genre and shake it up, I'm wondering what's next. He can clearly do a sci-fi now that there's time travel involved. It's easy to do a spy thriller heist film. I don't know, even make fun of Fast and Furious since he now has a crew to do that. But my theory is that they're going to keep 22 Jump in it, right? They're going to cover more unconventional genres. They've talked about Deadpool being up there with Jesus since both of these movies are the highest rated R films of all time. So considering that they've already dealt with the afterlife, man, who's to say he can't make a faith-based film? Christian movies are doing really well. They're a hot commodity. They can join with Pure Flix. I don't know. Maybe it'll play like a film noir and they can get Robert Rodriguez in there. You know, make it a meta musical with Damien Chazelle or build up to what I would consider one of the biggest fourth wall breaks of all time. One of the biggest switch ups, right? One of the best meta things you can do. And that's to have one of the Deadpool sequels be a documentary. Now that sounds insane to some people, it's even boring, but at a certain point, a rated R Marvel Deadpool movie didn't seem like the case either. Now it's a freaking franchise, and in my opinion, if you have a superhero who can dissect what's literally become to many people the new western, this whole thing that, that some people are having superhero fatigue of, something that has become an actual culture in our society, to have a superhero who can get the behind the scenes, 
who can literally get to the point of the audience who's who's watching the movies to get that and create a sort of mockumentary type of narrative on one of the biggest waves in cinema I mean, Ryan Reynolds already got nominated for a Golden Globe, so now imagine him winning the Academy Award for Best Documentary for Deadpool Made in America. Thank you guys for checking out this video. As always, big shout out to the patrons over there. They help out on a monthly basis because these videos, man, they're copywriting like crazy out there. So thank you to the patrons out there. But I'm curious to know your thoughts on this. Definitely let me know down below in the comment section. Uh, you know, this is more of a theory in terms of what he's going to play next. If that documentary happens, some of you are going to listen to this and be like, oh, that's dumb, that's crazy, whatever. I said the same thing about The Rock. That's going to happen eventually. Watch. And if he does do the documentary and the, the man gets nominated, I want to just... I don't want to touch the globe, but I'm curious to know what your theory would be. What genre, what like twist or whatever approach you want to see in the next Deadpool movie? Let me know down below in the comment section. Uh, talk about movies or anything else, and I'll see you guys next time.